the witnesses if it's a question about the little necessary parties yes. as a usual suspects. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my remarks won't take nearly as long here because we are taking a different approach in this, in this particular matter than uh, the, the prosecutor is. Uh, quite frankly, uh, we think at the end of the day, uh, it, when, when you finally get this, this matter, uh, that the evidence will show and, and that the instructions will indicate that, that you are here to decide only one thing, and that's what happened with uh, Rebecca Blatch. That, that this, these other informations about these other parties, Ms. Herringa and MJN, they're just not before you. And that this Rebecca Bletcher situation that you're going to be asked to decide, and that's what we'll be focusing on during the course of this, this trial. Uh, quite frankly, uh, we believe that that once you hear that story as as a part of some other grand scheme of things, uh, with a lot of different information in it that that may or may not be interpreted as the prosecutor would like you to, that you will find that my client uh, is not responsible for Ms. Bletcher's death. Uh, What we want you to, to hear during the course of this trial was that uh, obviously we're conceding uh, that Ms. Bleck was murdered. That that's, that's a question that that's just, there's no issue to. Uh, she was uh, out jogging and minding her own business, living her own life. Uh, she, she was a, a mother and a wife and did nothing to deserve what happened to her. Uh, and, and that this is just, it's just that this is what happened. Um, what we're going to think, what you're going to find out is that the day before Ms. Fletch died, um, she was in an argument. Um, she was in an argument with her husband, um, Kevin Fletch. Um, and that there was, there was this, this issue that came up. This, Kevin Fletch, the husband, wanted to take their daughter, Ellie, and go up to um, their cabin uh, in a place called Luther, about two hours from their home. And he wanted to take her up to that cabin, and he wanted to take her up on June 29th, the Sunday when, where Ms. Blake was, was, was killed. Um, the significance of that is that normally Ellie, who was a 16-year-old at the time, jogs with her mother on that day. That's the day that they usually get together and they go out, they go jogging, and, and quite frankly, the explanation for why Mr. Blake wanted um, Ellie to go with him didn't really make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Certainly it didn't make sense to, to uh, Rebecca. Uh, quite frankly, he wanted to go up to Luther to mow the lawn. Uh, it's a two-hour trip, and they were going to go up there the following week anyway to, because they had company coming. They were all going to go up and join, join this, this location. And so to go up, take two hours to go up there and mow the lawn for 20 minutes and then come back, it just didn't make a lot of sense to her, especially when it meant that Ellie couldn't come with their mom and go jogging. Um, Kevin Bletch won the argument. Uh, Ellie uh, got in the car uh, with her dad, and they went up and uh, were two hours away when, uh, when Rebecca uh, was, was murdered. She was running alone. Had uh, her daughter been there, she she had company. Uh, what you're going to find out is the police later discover uh, that there is a there are two life insurance policies on Rebecca Bletch, uh, totaling about two hundred thousand um, dollars. And that's some facts that you have to take with you uh, as we turn and look focus on a man uh, by the name of. Mr. Bloom is my client's cousin. Um, Mr. Bloom uh, knew uh, Rebecca Bletch. Their kids played soccer together. And it, and it appears that Mr. Bloom had a, a, at least some sort of fascination with, with uh, Rebecca Bletch because uh, he was Facebook stalking her. He was following her on Facebook and, and trying to contact her and, and get information about her. It also appears that uh, Mr. Bloom was uh, in financial difficulty. He was bankrupt. Um, further, it looks as if 
there may have been a connection between Mr. Bloom and uh, Kevin Bletch, the husband. Uh, there was a, there was a, uh, a club that they, they both they both had an association with to different degrees, but, but it is our expectation that that's where the two of them at least had at met, maybe, and perhaps uh, maybe even more than that. You should know that Mr. Bloom is an expert marksman. He trained uh, firearms um, to Air Force uh, um, Air Force recruits when they been into the service. Uh, he was one of the guys who trained them in firearms. Um, it should also be noted that Mr. Bloom had uh, basically the run of, of his cousin, Mr. Willis's home. Uh, Mr. Bloom knew of the gun, uh, and there's some indication that he's actually fired the gun, uh, that he knew of the van and had access to the van. And in fact, uh, the testimony will be that we expect that some of the materials in the van were actually some of his stuff. There's some sporting goods that were found in the van as well that, that uh, Mr. Bloom placed there. These, these two guys had been close. Uh, Mr. Willis doesn't lock his door. Folks, a lot of folks in that area don't. And, and his cousin would have been able to get in and knew where things were, including the gun. We think that the evidence will show that, that this, the, the shots that killed um, Ms. Bletch were um, um, well placed. Uh, we think that Ms. Bletch, uh, and you'll be shown photographs of her belongings stacked on the side of the road. We think that Ms. Bletch was ultimately stopped, uh, was running, that we think she knew the person that stopped her, and that if she was running away, when she, when she realized what danger she was in. We think that the evidence will show that the shots that killed her were shot were from the, a 22 handgun, and that she was moving away, she was running away, and these shots were at distance. And, and, those, and, and we think that the evidence will show that this is not the kind of shooting that a casual gun owner can, can accomplish. These were shots well placed from a distance. We think that uh, what you're going to find is that there are circumstances um, beyond what we've talked about this morning that would indicate that it was, in fact, Mr. Bloom who's done the shooting here. Uh, we believe that uh, there will be testimony from uh, police officers that will indicate that the day before, the couple of days before, uh, they were closing in on Mr. Bloom, talking to him about the circumstances. He wipes his computer clean. He then wipes his cell phone clean. We, will, we believe that the police will indicate that this he was a person who was a person of interest to them. That he had details about Mrs. Bletch's murder that weren't released to the public. In other words, he had inside information. We believe that he, Mr. Bloom, had both the motive and the opportunity to do the shooting, and that he is, in fact, the person who did it. And that he is, in fact, the person who returns materials that he's taken from his cousin back to where he found them after he used them and has left his cousin here to carry the weight. We believe that once you hear all the evidence to find my client not guilty, we, we believe that you'll hear evidence that's, that's widely circumstantial, and we'll talk about that that evidence of circumstantial nature that could, be, that could indicate different outcomes and not necessarily the one the prosecutor wants you to believe. And that when you hear all that information, that you'll come back with a verdict of not guilty in this particular matter. Thank you, ladies. Okay, thank you, Mr. Johnson. That